Good morning once again. We are welcome to another class. And today I will be discussing about the internal structure of a flowering plant. That's today's topic. We will be talking about the internal structure of a flowering plant. And so the first thing that we have to know is that there are three organs that make up a flowering plant. We have the root, stem and leaves. The root is just an organ that anchors what a vascular plant in the soil. It helps to hold the vascular plant in the soil and helps to absorb what minerals and water and sometimes they store what carbohydrate too. But also that what the roots serve as an anchor for plants. Um, we have for two types of root system in genosperm and dicot, they have the tap root system while the monocots have a fibrous root system. And the thing about the tap root system is that what they penetrate what deeply and are therefore well adapted to deep soil. Whereas fibrous roots do not usually penetrate deeply and they are best for shallow soils or region where the rainfall is light. The stem is an organ that raises or separates what leaves and exposes them to sunlight. So the stem just what raises what leaves that and exposes them more to sunlight. And the same also what raises reproductive structures. And what are the reproductive structures of our, they are the flowers? So facilitating the dispersal of pollens and fruits. And each stem consists of an alternate system of nodes where leaves are attached. So what that node is the point where leaves are attached. So a jam might ask you that what are nodes? Just so that what nodes are that point where leaves are attached, while internodes are just what the separation, they are the gap between what the nodes. And sometimes some plants have what additional functions for food storage, example are the rhizome, rhizome, the bulb, stolon, and tubers. So let's move towards the tissues that are present in plant. We have three type of tissue that are present in plants. We have the derma, the vascular, and the ground tissue. The derma, vascular, and the and the ground tissue. And the derma tissue is just the plant outer covering, like our skin now. They protect the plant against physical damage and pathogens and a non-wooden plant it is usually a single tissue called the epidermis why in leaves and most stems the cortical protects the helps to prevent water loss and in woody plants they have a protective tissue called the periderm which replaces the epidermis epidermis and this epidermis also have a specialized function in each region. Then the next tissue that we are going to be talking about are the vascular or tissue or system. This vascular tissue system carries out a long transport of materials between the root and the shoot. And we have two types. 
we have the xylem and the phloem the xylem and the phloem so xylem conducts water and dissolves mineral upward from the root into the shoots and the phloem transports sugar where they are usually made from the leaves to where they are needed that an either dama or vascular are part of the grand tissues and the grand tissue that is internal to the vascular tissue is known as the pitch while the grand tissue that is external to the vascular tissue is known as the cortex and this grand tissue system have a specialized function for photosynthesis and support so let's move to the common type of plant cells the first type of plant cell that we have are the parenchyma cells and mature parenchyma cells have primary wall and relatively thin and flexible and they lack what secondary wall don't forget that what parenchyma cells do not have a secondary what's walls so parenchyma cells perform most of the metabolic function of the plant synthesizing and storing various organic products for example photosynthesis occur within the chloroplast of the parenchyma cells in the leaves so the fleshy tissue of many fruits is composed of parenchyma cell because for most parenchyma cells have the ability to divide and to differentiate into the other type of plant cell under a particular what condition so what look at that diagram there the diagram there shows some example of it shows the an example of parenchyma cell and those green green things there they are the what chloroplast and I hope that we know the function of the chloroplast. Our chloroplasts are responsible for photosynthesis. The cell that we have are the cholenchyma cells. So cholenchyma cells help to support young part of the plant shoot. And they are generally elongated and have a thicker primary walls than parenchyma cells. So they can provide what sub flexible support without restraining what growth. That's something about the parenchyma cells. Maturity parenchyma uh, cells are living and flexible, and they support stem and leaves on like the parenchyma cell. So we'll look at that diagram there. It shows a, an example, a picture of the parenchyma cells of uh, plant cell are the sclerenchyma cells so a sclerenchyma also function as supporting elements in plant but they are more rigid than the cholenchyma cells and sclerenchyma have a secondary cells or walls they are secondary walls and these walls are thick and contain large amount of lignin so what and something about mature sclerenchyma cell is that they cannot elongate and they occur in region of the plant that have stopped growing in length so sclerenchyma cell are also specialized for support that and many are dead at maturity because but they produce secondary wall before the protopa, protoplast and the meaning of protoplast is just what the living part of the cell so before the protoplast dies Sclerenchyma cells, they are known as the sclerid and fiber and are specialized for support and strengthening. Sclerids have very thick lignified walls and sclerid impart the hardness to not shed and seed coat. White fibers are usually long and slender and some are used commercially in producing ropes, flax and fibers. These are just some of the pictures of sclerid and fiber. You can see the first one. The first one is the sclerid in pairs, and the second one are the fiber cells. Type of water conducting cell that is the tracheid and vessel element are tubular and elongated cells that are dead at functional maturity. 
Tracheid are in the xylem of nearly all vascular plants. When leaving cellular content of tracheid or vessel element disintegrate, the cell wall thickens. The cell thickening will remain behind, forming a non-living conduit through which water can flow. As just further explain tracheid and vascular elements. The tracheid are long thin cells with tapered end, while vessel elements are generally wider, shorter, thinner walled, and less tapered than the tracheids. So these are just the some images of tracheid and vessel elements. So look at them, vessel elements with perforated end wall. So look at the differences very well. But the phloem. So unlike the xylem, the phloem are functional at maturity. The phloem are, are functional at maturity. Although what phloem are alive, they are sieve tube elements, lack nucleus, ribosome, and a distinct vacuole. So this reduces what the cell content and allow nutrients to pass through them easily. From the sieve tube element, the flame also have a cell called the companion cell. So this companion cell is connected to the sieve tube element by numerous channels called the plasmodesmata. And in some plants, the companion cell helps to load sugars into the sieve tube element. So these are just the diagram of the sieve tube element. You can see the sieve tube element, the plasma dust matter, the sieve plate, and the nucleus of the companion cells. So that's the end of today's class. I hope you enjoy it. So we'll meet again next time.